this is Terry from Fabric Junction in Sturgis, South Dakota. Today I'm going to show you how to do a simple pineapple using uh, the So Simple Pineapple book for our instructions. Excuse me. My sam samples that I've made here are both table runners. One is using the smallest square that's in the book and the other is using the largest square in the book. If you don't, you can make big quilts. If you want to just give it a try, how about just a simple little pot holder? Either one would work. So as a re reference, we have a book that's available and this is how we make them. All my squares are cut from the instructions given in the book. And I was able to find, as you can see on my pot holders, uh, to fussy cut my little characters in the middle. Because I wanted to, this is going to be a pot holder again, so I wanted to make it fun. But I can see you do doing uh, a family photo and making a big quilt or a nice wall hanging. That would work. And here's how it goes. Once you have picked up the size that you're going to do your square, you cut another one exactly the same size. Before you sew though, you need to mark an X on one piece. Not on both, just on one. And I like to do my marking with, with a pencil, especially if it's a place I'm going to sew or cut. <clears throat> put our two pieces together and here's the part that is different. We are going to sew all the way around the outer edge. So I have sewn on all four sides, and I know my pencil mark isn't very dark on this one, but you want to separate these. Kind of pull them apart a little bit. Find your line, and do a little cut. So on this particular one, you're going to need a small pair of scissors. So once you have made your little cut, cut on that line clear to the corner. And it's important that you get to the corner. Okay, I go to the ironing board and I like to just give it a little press after I have cut it before I open it up. And now we will open it up and press each one of those out. And now it kind of looks like square in a square. But there's going to be one important difference. In a pineapple, we don't have to worry about our tips. Because as, as you see, we really don't have a seam allowance. And if we take it, we cut off the tip. But that's the way a pineapple is set. So once I get it open, and as you can see, it's not perfect, perfect. But it's pressed. It's open. And what I do is I just kind of follow my lines once I get it centered. Oh, 
open it up and again this time I've already got my line drawn so you will draw another line but just lay it nice do a quarter inch seam all the way around Sometimes my squares match up better, sometimes a little worse. I know that it is me, but when I'm done, I still have a beautiful block. So that's what makes this technique fun, and I enjoy doing it. So once I'm all the way around, before I cut it open, I cut off the little dog ears because I don't need those anymore. So I cut them off and once again, open it up, find your little it doesn't have to be in the middle, but find your little pencil line, do a little tiny snip, and then cut again. Now the nice thing about this is you can keep adding onto your square this way and make it as big as you would like. The book has um, several sizes in it several project ideas that you can do. Like I said, I just came across a couple of these left over from another project and thought, you know, these would make a great pot holder and I'm going to do it in the pineapple fashion. Now I've made a traditional pineapple and it's a lot of pieces and a lot of cutting. That's what makes this one just fun because I'm only cutting squares, sewing, pressing, and making another one. And like I said, I can make it as big as I want. And again, we do the same thing. Lay it out, sew all four sides. And I'll take a minute here, and if you can see, this one's even lining up better than my last one. So I might get pretty good at this someday. We'll do a quick sew around. And when I'm doing this, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of times I'll mark uh, all my squares at the same time so I don't have to stop and mark each one. And I'll have them all marked and sitting there ready to go. And if I do multiples, again I do chain piecing. I would feed one after the other. So I cut off my hearts, get it to open back up. Say. And sometimes, let's say I have one here, 
I'll have Christopher get in a little closer. You can see my pencil mark is not exactly where my intersection is. To compensate for that, because it can happen, as I'm cutting, when I get closer to that, because I do want to be right in that intersection. So you can see I shifted off my pencil mark a little bit. So I consider my pencil mark my guide. Sometimes it's right in the intersection like it is in that one. Sometimes it's off just a smidgen. Well, you want to make sure that when you're cutting that you go right into where your stitching has crossed. <clears throat> so again, a little press that kind of sets that bias back down before I open it up. And on this particular one, now my piece will be turned into a pot holder to match his buddy over here. So if you make a pot holder, you can do some fancy stitching, simple stitching, whatever you choose, but check out our binding a pot holder video to show you how to finish it up with our nice loop. And maybe you'd like to make a runner or a quilt, you can get the book on our website at junctionfabric.com. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching us at Fabric Junction.